Liza was working as a teaching assistant at a college. One day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Liza knew some of them were going to cheat. And indeed, soon after the exam started, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Who is it? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his ruler. Can you figure out which of these two watches is real and which is just a toy? The watch on the left is a toy. Look at its minute hand. It's too long and won't be able to pass all the way around the watch face. In a small village, there were four people who were suspected of being werewolves. One night, the village held a meeting to decide which of them was the monster. Here is what the suspects look like. This person has long, sharp fingernails and is known for being able to run extremely fast. This person has long, sharp teeth and is known for being able to see in the dark. This person has wild, unkept hair and is known for being able to jump high. And this person has a deep, growling voice and is known for being able to smell things from far away. Can you figure out which of them is the werewolf? Suspect B is the werewolf. The description of long, sharp teeth and being able to see in the dark are both typical characteristics of werewolves in mythology and folklore. While the other suspects have unusual traits as well, they are not necessarily associated with werewolves. Joe has a friend, Lucas, who never answered any questions directly. Once, Joe sent Lucas a message inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Lucas's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money, J-O-B-I-N-J-O-B. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Lucas meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. <laughs> Look at this bizarre wedding. What do you think? Why are these people who are about to get married wearing black balaclavas. Look, there are cameras on the walls. This couple must be hiding their identities. Three friends went for a walk in a forest. People said a wizard lived there, and he wasn't a kind, friendly person. But our guys didn't believe these rumors. Everyone knows magic doesn't exist. Suddenly, a wall of fire blocked their way. Look at the things the friends have and try to figure out what they can use to put the fire out. They could use this bucket to bring some water from that puddle, but it wouldn't be enough to put out such a large fire. This hose is useless, there's nothing to attach it to. The friend should choose this spade and use soil to put the fire out. You're in a forest. Suddenly, it starts raining. You notice a cave and hide there. But as soon as you get inside, the opening behind you closes. There are three tunnels in front of you, and one of them leads to freedom. But the first tunnel is full of crocodiles that haven't eaten in two years. In the second tunnel, there is a hungry lion that hasn't had any food in two weeks. And the third tunnel leads to a scorching hot desert. Which tunnel should uh -oh. you choose? You should wait until the desert cools down at night and follow the third tunnel. As for crocodiles, yes, these animals can indeed live without food for up to two years. Lions can also survive for two weeks without eating anything. But before you get a chance to leave the cave, you hear some deafening noise. It's a landslide. The tunnels end up blocked, but you now see three other passages. 
A fire-breathing, wait, is it a dragon? Is guarding the first passage. The second passage is filled with hundreds of poisonous cacti growing there. Their spines are covered with an extremely toxic substance. And in the third tunnel, you can see the red eyes of some very hungry wolves. Which tunnel can Uh lead you to safety? You should choose the tunnel with the cacti. At least they can't move. And if you're careful, you'll be able to walk around the cacti without touching their spines. One morning, Donna came to the office and found a box of chocolates on her desk. There was also a strange note. Hmm, can you help Donna understand who presented her the sweets? Her secret admirer is Ryan. Those are not dates. The number actually means the needed letter in the name of the month. A man told his boss, don't take your planned flight today. I had a dream last night that if you do, it might end badly. Your plane will crash. The boss fired the man. Can you figure out why? The man was a night watchman. He should have been on duty the previous night, not dreaming. Jacob and Mark decided to go on a camping trip. Look at the things they're going to take with them and say what they should leave at home. A small hint, try to think outside the box. Look, a tent. Game, rice, lamp. All of these words consist of four letters. But a chair? This word has five letters. The friends should leave it at home. Now, you're tied up on some railroad tracks and can't wriggle free. There's a train heading your way, and it doesn't look like it's stopping. Oh well. If you stretch your arms out, you can just reach a lighter, a small pocket razor, and a can of oil. Which can you use to escape? Pour the oil on the ropes holding you down. It'll act as a lubricant, and you'll be able to wriggle free. Taylor finished another awesome ice fishing session. He packed up his gear and walked back home with his dinner. Halfway back to the car, he realized he was being followed by a hungry cougar. It started chasing him. Taylor was so close to his car, but the cougar was gaining on him. What should he do? He should fling the fish to the side to distract the cougar. Then he should ditch all his gear. It's just slowing him down. That way, he's got a chance of making it to the car before he turns into cougar chow. Well, you find yourself in a pitch black room. The room is huge and there are many hallways and corridors leading to unknown places. You need to find your way out before the room starts heating up like an oven. You only have two minutes. You can feel some pipes on the wall but nothing else. How can you save yourself? When the pipes start heating up, they'll probably turn red. It'll already be super hot by then, but you'll have just enough time to figure out the layout of the room and find a way to escape. Angela decided to go for a nice walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. About an hour in, she tripped and spilled all her water. No problem. Right in front of her was a tiny lake, and close by, a small stream and a cactus. Which one should you use to get herself a refreshing drink of water? She should head for the stream. That lake isn't moving. That means it probably has bacteria living in it. And a single cactus won't have enough water to quench her thirst. Even though the stream is pretty small, moving water is almost always the safest option. What are those things? Oh, paw prints! Those are bear tracks heading to the forest, a wolf print coming out of the forest, and some elk prints heading toward a lake. Well, what's the best place to go if you're not into the whole being eaten thing? Think fast! The bear going into the forest probably scared that large dog off. 
Oh, you thought those were wolf prints? Mm, not likely. Wolves mostly travel in packs. The bear is most likely chasing the elk, so they'll both end up at the lake. That means the forest's safe for now. You're stuck in a well in a small village, and the water's already up to your knees. There's a rope leading to the mouth of the well, but it's definitely not strong enough to hold you. You look around and find a bucket, some clothing, and a lighter. How do you escape? Shove the clothes in the bucket, tie the bucket to the rope, and light the clothes on fire. Then quickly hoist the bucket up. Chances are, in such a small village, someone will see the smoke and run over to help you. Kate finished her morning hike and decided it was time to go home. She saw a vintage jeep parked by the hiking path. While she was admiring it, a huge grizzly appeared in front of her. The bear didn't seem that interested in her, for now. But that could change any second. There was a large screwdriver on the floor by the jeep. What can she do to make sure the bear won't be interested in her? She can puncture the gas tank with the screwdriver and douse herself in gasoline. That way, the bear wouldn't be so interested in her scent. Eric was out camping and he needed some light to see in the dark. He reached into his tent, but his flashlight wasn't working for some reason and his phone only had 10% battery. He looked around and saw a bottle of water, an empty sandwich bag, his hiking boots, and a pillow. What can he do to make more light? He can take his phone and put it right next to the water bottle. The water inside the bottle will diffuse the light, making it much brighter. Adrian and Jack went rock climbing all day, then realized it was time to head home. After a long walk through the woods trying to get to their car, they realized they were totally lost. They'd never been in these woods before. They didn't have a clue what to do. What's worse, Jack collapsed from exhaustion and couldn't take another step. Adrian tried to lift him up, but Jack was too heavy. Night was approaching. He tried to call for help, but neither phone had any signal. His only choice was to venture out and seek help. He checked both gear bags and found a small pick hammer, some ropes, some sturdy locks, and a harness. What should he do? Adrian should put on the harness and tie all the ropes together to make one huge long one. Then he should tie one end to Jack and one end to his harness. That way, if he got lost in the woods, he'd be able to find his way back to Jack. That's one long rope. He knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have the name Mary? Back in the day, she was young and beautiful too. Jack has a small shop that sells socks. One day, he decided to attract more people and launched an advertisement. Socks for free. Many people came there, but all the customers had to pay, even though the socks were free. Why? Jack would only give the left sock to his customers. They looked nice and people wanted to buy it. Who needs only one sock after all? A man was driving his car all the way from New York to LA. At the end of the trip, he discovered that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he reached his destination successfully. How is it possible? The punctured tire was a spare one. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet in the wall. There's no windows in the room and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. There are five girls in the room. Nicole is talking on the phone, Kimberly is reading, Jessica is playing hide and seek, and Melody is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Jessica. 5. 
six, seven, five, six. Which number is missing? A small hint, it's not seven. You have seven seconds to do the math. Number eight is missing. The subsequent number of 567 is 568. Sally works as a barista. This morning, she dropped a cup full of coffee. Luckily, her white shirt wasn't stained, but it took a while to clean up the mess. How come? There were coffee beans in the cup. They ended up right under the counter. Imagine you've just entered a pitch black room. There's an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some kindling wood inside the room. You only have one match. You have to make a tough choice. What to light first? The oil lamp is definitely a good choice, but it's still incorrect. First of all, you'll need to light the match. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the money in the park among cacti. After the police officers arrested all the suspects, they almost immediately figured out who the bank robber was. Can you do the same? This guy on the left has scratches left by cacti all over his body. There are six glasses in a row on the table. The first three are filled with orange juice and the other three are empty. Your task is to make full and empty glasses alternate by moving just one glass. How can you do it? Take the second glass and pour the juice in the fifth glass. Dennis was at home watching TV. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive vase fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. Dennis tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold. That's why he couldn't identify who it was. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. The man made the story up to not tell his wife he'd broken the vase. How did they know this? Anyone who wears glasses know they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Adam Nixon, who didn't really like oh. modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the manager of the gallery <laughs> thanked Mr. Nixon for his actions. How come? Adam was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and saved many more exhibits. Dora came from New York to his hometown, Chicago, to spend a week with his father. Three days later, the father called the police and said his son had poisoned himself. The police examined Theodore's things to check if there was anything suspicious. After that, they took the father to the police station for further interrogation. What seems suspicious to them? The officers found a return ticket from Chicago to New York. Theodore wouldn't have bought this ticket if he hadn't been planning to return to New York. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. And you know what? She got lost again! After wandering around for a couple of hours, she finally found the witch's house. Esme asked the witch to show her the way back home. The witch wanted to make Esme her maid, but she had a problem. She was planning a vacation and wanted to go fishing. Her fishing rod was 13 feet long, and one was only allowed to take things no longer than 12 feet on the train. The witch promised Esme that if the girl found a solution, she'd let her go. What can Esme recommend? Esme was very good at geometry. She advised the witch to put the rod in a 12 by 5 foot box. Diagonally, it fit perfectly. 
On a Sunday evening, Mrs. Collins was having tea at her friend's house. Her friend suddenly said that she had seen one of Mrs. Collins' daughters in the mall that day. Mrs. Collins got angry because all of the girls were grounded. She asked which daughter it was, but her friend couldn't tell. She wasn't wearing her glasses when she was at the mall. When Mrs. Collins returned home, she asked the girls what they had been doing the whole day. Abigail said she'd spent the day reading. Brianna said she had stayed at school after classes to study a bit more. Charlotte said that she had been practicing for her upcoming piano concert. Who lied? Brianna, it's Sunday. There's no school. A young girl, Tenley, was brought to the hospital after being poisoned. But the examination showed that Tenley hadn't eaten or drunk anything that day. Her sister, Kennedy, said she didn't know anything about the accident. Tenley's friend, Ruby, said, We were at school when Tenley felt bad. Tenley's boyfriend, Archie, said, I haven't even talked to her today. How was Tenley poisoned, and who did it? The girl hasn't eaten anything, but she has some lipstick on. That's what contains poison. And the only person who had access to Tenley's room that day was her sister, Kennedy. There was a car accident in a tunnel. The police suspected that one of the drivers, Owen, had fallen asleep behind the wheel. But Owen denied it. I just couldn't see well because of the rainstorm, he said. The police didn't believe him and immediately arrested the man. Why? The accident happened in a tunnel. It couldn't rain there. Someone in the town was stealing cars. Every time a car disappeared, its owner would get a message from an anonymous number. In each message, there were two emojis that didn't make any sense. The police tracked the number, and the geolocation led to three houses. They questioned the owners, Mr. Walson, Mrs. Coleman, and Mr. Woolridge. Can you tell who the car thief is? The emojis seem to make sense after all. They're a wall and a father with a son. Combine them and you'll get Walson. So Mr. Walson must be the one stealing cars. Now let's play the game Who's Less Smart? It's early morning. Tom and Joseph are driving their teenage children to school. Who is not smart? Joseph. His son is not in the car. His father has probably forgotten about the poor guy. Annie and Emma are volunteering in an animal shelter. Annie is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is not smart here? Annie. She's giving dog food to the cats. Logan and Anthony are both having job interviews at 4 p.m. Logan is packing some food, and Anthony is ironing his best suit. Who's not smart? Anthony, look at the clock. The interview is going to start in 5 minutes, and he's still at home. Logan is at home, too. But there's still another hour till his interview begins. Noelle and Gabriella are cleaning the house. Noelle is listening to music while vacuum cleaning the living room. And Gabrielle is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Noelle, the vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Ms. Lopez took her students to an art museum. Half an hour into the excursion, a worried museum worker approached the professor. He told Ms. Lopez one of the exhibits, a precious vase, had been damaged. 
the culprit could be no one else but one of the students. Only three of them came close to the vase, but who ruined it? Maria said, After I looked at the vase, I noticed my makeup was smudged, so I went straight to the bathroom. Antony said, I didn't touch the exhibit. After looking at it, I went to the next room to see the dino skeleton. And Nathan said he had been following Ms. Lopez taking notes. One of these students is lying, but who? Antony. There are no dinosaur bones in the art museum. Someone broke into Samantha's house through the window and stole some valuable things. When the police came, she told them she suspected her younger brother Sam. The police officers went to question the guy, but he denied everything. I was playing basketball several days ago and broke my arm. It's in a cast now. I wouldn't be able to get into the house. The police officers left, but the next day, one of them saw Sam in a cafe. The guy was still wearing the cast but the officer immediately arrested him. Why? When the police visited Sam, the guy had the cast on his right arm. Now, it was on his left arm. Look at these two families having dinner. One is munching on pizzas with different yummy toppings. The other is having steaks and vegetables. Can you figure out which family is poorer? No matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family eating steaks must have more money than the second one. Keith had a tragic accident when he was a teenager. Unfortunately, it left the guy blind. He was dreaming of being able to see again for years. One day, Keith was lucky to find a doctor who told him a special surgery could solve his problem. Keith agreed right away. The surgery went well, and the guy took a train to go home. His girlfriend accompanied him. The doctor told Keith he had to wait for at least three hours before taking the bandages off. Keith was so impatient and excited, he could hardly wait for the time to be over. Three hours later, they were still on the train. And even though his girlfriend was against this idea, the guy wouldn't listen. He slowly pulled off the bandages, and then he screamed and lost consciousness. Why? When Keith opened his eyes, the train was going through a dark tunnel. The poor guy thought he was still blind and fainted. To pass an exam, Dennis has to solve a riddle. 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 2. Find a set of three whole numbers whose sum will be the same as their total when multiplied. Dennis gave the right answer almost immediately. These numbers are 1, 2, and 3. Tyler was going to his friend's place in the evening when a stranger in a black mask caught him. The next thing the guy knew, he was in a large room, locked in a cage. There were three levers in the wall next to the cage. If he pulled the first lever, he would let hungry lions into the cage. The second lever would fill the cage with water. And the third lever would activate a special mechanism. It would make the top of the cage move down towards the bottom crushing everyone and everything inside. Which lever should Tyler pull to survive? His only choice is the second lever. All the water will flow out through the bars of the cage. Joan came home one evening and discovered that someone had burgled her house. When the police arrived, first of all, they went to question the neighbors. Victoria said, I was visiting my friend. She lives two blocks away. I came home a couple of minutes ago. Peter explained to the officers that he was ill. He only made a short trip to the pharmacy and stayed in bed after that. Nathan said, My wife and I were preparing for a barbecue party. Our friends were supposed to come to us, 
But as you see, it's pouring with rain, and we had to cancel our plans. The police officers realized that for some reason, one of the neighbors was lying. Who was it? Victoria. It was raining, and she said she had just come home. But her hair, clothes, and the umbrella, which was standing near the door, were absolutely dry. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beat. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint, so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles, but when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible and he lost. How's that? Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person is telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people, but Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said 6, and the guest said 3. Then the security said 10 to the second visitor, and the reply was 3 as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters, six, 10, and 2 have 3 letters. That's why the answer was 3. In the word 7, there are 5 letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. 
After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the kingdom of riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot, so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Well, after a few seconds, you look around, and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How did you figure it out? Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. <sighs> oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed, and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them, but you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the... Uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing. Only an empty bed. Were you sleeping? Or was it real? You noticed something. Phew. Oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you laid down. Now, it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're all uh -oh. vampires! How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming! You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great, it fits. You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. 
could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck. Wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a werewolf. Uh Eh, Still kind of cute though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard. Vampires are inside the castle. A werewolf is waiting outside and zombies are approaching. You're trapped. Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues. Do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. The gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, It'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. Four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. 7 to 10 points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight chill runs down your back. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.